We live in a mobile world. Our smartphones have become extensions of ourselves. We use apps for everything from banking to shopping to staying connected with loved ones. But what happens when these apps, the very tools we rely on, are compromised? This is where the world of app hacking comes into play. App hacking is the process of exploiting vulnerabilities within mobile applications. Hackers, driven by various motives, seek to gain unauthorized access to sensitive data or disrupt the app's functionality. Their targets are the millions of apps that populate the digital landscape. Our reliance on these apps makes them a treasure trove of valuable information. The threat is real and constantly evolving. As new technologies emerge, so too do new vulnerabilities. It's a high-stakes game of cat and mouse, with developers constantly working to secure their apps while hackers seek ways to bypass their defenses. Understanding app hacking is not just about knowing the technicalities. It's about comprehending the potential impact on our lives. From financial losses to identity theft, the consequences of a successful attack can be devastating. This is why it's crucial for both app developers and users to grasp the seriousness of this threat. To truly grasp the intricacies of app hacking, we need to delve into the building blocks of mobile applications. At their core, apps are sets of instructions that tell your phone how to perform specific tasks. These instructions are written in code, and understanding this code is key for both developers and hackers. Android apps, in particular, are distributed as APK files. Think of an APK as a package containing all the necessary components for the app to run. This includes the code, images, sounds, and other resources. When you download an app, you're essentially downloading and installing this APK on your device. Developers rely on software development kits, or SDKs, to build their apps. SDKs provide pre-built components and libraries, simplifying the development process. However, SDKs can also introduce vulnerabilities if not used correctly. A simple example is an SDK that handles login credentials, but doesn't encrypt the data properly. This could allow a hacker to intercept usernames and passwords. Imagine a messaging app using an SDK for encryption. If the SDK has a flaw, a hacker could potentially decrypt and read all messages sent through that app. This highlights why understanding the code, the APK structure, and the SDKs used is crucial for anyone looking to secure an app or exploit its weaknesses. The consequences of neglecting app security can be dire impacting both individuals and organizations. For individuals, the risks range from data breaches to financial losses. Imagine a banking app with a security flaw that allows a hacker to transfer funds from your account, or a social media app compromised to steal personal information leading to identity theft. Businesses face even greater risks. A data breach can damage a company's reputation, erode customer trust, and lead to significant financial losses. The cost of recovering from such an incident can be astronomical, involving legal fees, regulatory fines, and the expense of implementing stronger security measures. The rise of mobile payment systems and the increasing amount of sensitive information stored on our phones have made app security more critical than ever. Neglecting this aspect is no longer an option. It's a shared responsibility between developers, who must prioritize secure coding practices, and users, who need to be aware of the risks and take steps to protect themselves. Just like you wouldn't leave your house unlocked, you shouldn't use apps with known security flaws. Staying informed about potential threats and taking proactive measures to mitigate them is crucial in today's mobile world. Hackers employ a variety of techniques to exploit vulnerabilities in mobile applications. Understanding these methods is essential for developing effective countermeasures. One common approach is reverse engineering. This involves decompiling the app's code to understand its inner workings. By analyzing the code, hackers can identify security weaknesses and develop exploits to target them. Man-in-the-middle attacks are another threat. In this scenario, a hacker intercepts communication between the app and the server, potentially stealing data or manipulating transactions. Imagine a hacker intercepting your credit card information while making an in-app purchase. Injection attacks, such as SQL injection, involve inserting malicious code into the app's input fields. If successful, this can allow the hacker to execute commands on the app's database, potentially gaining access to sensitive information. These are just a few examples of the many techniques employed by hackers. It's important to note that the legal and ethical implications of these actions vary significantly.
While ethical hackers use their skills to identify and report vulnerabilities, malicious actors exploit them for personal gain. Understanding the difference is crucial, as engaging in unethical hacking activities can have serious legal consequences. In the realm of cybersecurity, the term hacker often carries negative connotations. However, it's important to distinguish between malicious actors and ethical hackers, also known as white hat hackers. These individuals use their skills for good, proactively identifying and reporting security vulnerabilities to help make apps and systems more secure. Ethical hackers play a crucial role in the software development lifecycle. By simulating real-world attack scenarios, they can uncover weaknesses that might otherwise go unnoticed. This allows developers to address vulnerabilities before they can be exploited by malicious actors. One example of ethical hacking is penetration testing, often referred to as pen testing. This involves simulating a real-world attack on a system or application to identify and exploit vulnerabilities. The goal is not to cause harm but to provide valuable insights that can improve security posture. Bug bounty programs are another example of ethical hacking in action. Companies offer rewards to security researchers who discover and report vulnerabilities in their products or services. This incentivizes ethical hackers to find and report bugs, making the digital world a safer place for everyone. App hacking, whether conducted ethically or maliciously, often follows a structured methodology. Understanding these steps can provide valuable insights into the attacker's mindset and help developers strengthen their defenses. The first step is reconnaissance, where the hacker gathers information about the target app. This includes identifying the app's architecture, the technologies used, and potential attack surfaces. Once the hacker has a good understanding of the target, they move on to vulnerability analysis. This involves using automated tools and manual techniques to identify weaknesses in the app's code, design, or configuration. The next step is exploitation. Once a vulnerability has been identified, the hacker develops and executes an exploit to gain unauthorized access or control over the app. This could involve injecting malicious code, bypassing authentication mechanisms, or escalating privileges. Finally, the hacker focuses on post-exploitation. This stage involves covering their tracks, maintaining persistence, and maximizing the impact of the attack. This could involve stealing data, modifying data, or disrupting the app's functionality. Identifying vulnerabilities is just the first step. The next crucial step is to assess their severity and prioritize remediation efforts. Not all vulnerabilities are created equal, and understanding the potential impact of each one is essential for effective risk management. The Common Vulnerability Scoring System, or CVSS, provides a standardized method for assessing the severity of vulnerabilities. CVSS scores range from 0 to 10, with higher scores indicating greater severity. Factors considered include the ease of exploitation, the potential impact on confidentiality, integrity, and availability, and the presence of mitigating factors. Prioritizing vulnerabilities is crucial, especially when dealing with limited resources. A risk-based approach should be taken, focusing on vulnerabilities that pose the greatest threat to the organization. This involves considering the likelihood of exploitation, the potential impact of a successful attack, and the value of the assets at risk. For example, a vulnerability that allows an attacker to gain remote code execution on a server with access to sensitive data would be considered a high priority. In contrast, a vulnerability that only allows an attacker to crash the app might be considered lower priority. Transparency and collaboration are essential for a secure digital ecosystem. When vulnerabilities are discovered, it's crucial to report them responsibly to the affected parties. This allows developers to address the issues and release patches to protect users. Responsible disclosure involves notifying the vendor or developer of the vulnerability privately, providing them with sufficient time to fix the issue before making it public. This ethical approach helps minimize the window of exposure for users and prevents malicious actors from exploiting the vulnerability. Clear and concise documentation is crucial when reporting vulnerabilities. This includes providing detailed steps to reproduce the issue, proof of concept code, and any relevant technical information that can assist developers in understanding and fixing the problem. Platforms like bug bounty programs and vulnerability disclosure platforms 
provide dedicated channels for security researchers to report vulnerabilities responsibly. These platforms facilitate communication between researchers and vendors, ensuring that vulnerabilities are addressed promptly and effectively.